My man Frank works in auto sales, and he's hoping that he can eventually leave that 9 to 5 behind by becoming a full-time Section 8 real estate investor. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am James Wise. This is the show where I work with investors like you. I help you guys start, build, grow your real estate portfolios, right? And here's the thing. Real estate investors, right? I know some people think that like, Real estate investors are just these, like, rich people that have always been rich. And, you know, you got, like, Grant Cardone with fucking boats and yachts and planes and all that crap. Look, real estate investors are just regular, everyday people. Guys like you, guys like me, etc. right? Guys like my man Frank. Frank lives in Virginia. Virginia is an incredibly expensive market. So when you're on a budget like somebody like Frank, it's hard to get started. Maybe you do need to be uh, uh, that that rich investor to do some business down in Virginia, but that's not the case with a lot of the flyover markets, a lot of the, the Midwest. So Frank has come to me uh, with a, a fairly moderate budget, but what we can do is we can do some serious damage in the Cleveland market. What you have, Frank, you have $50,000, and you want to get into Section 8 rental property investing, and we could absolutely accomplish it. We're going to be going over this particular property in a little bit that I think is really going to help you out. But before we do that bro you had some questions to me your main questions were just in general how does section 8 work and that is a, a super important question that a lot of investors have so I've taken you to holdwise.com and I want you to go to the FAC okay we got three facts right we got the facts for the homeowners that we send uh, mailings to like yo we want to buy your houses probably not gonna help you out Frank we got facts for the tenants probably not that interesting to you at the moment and then we got the real estate investor fact right and then right here, folks, under that, we got a whole section of this FAC dedicated to Section 8. What you want to do is you want to go over that, Frank, because the Section 8 process, right, it's very convoluted, very confusing. It's, it's the government, right? It's bureaucratic, okay? But you want to use Section 8 because of the eviction moratorium, and that is great. That's amazing. I mean, maybe you got that idea from me because I've been talking about that on the show for quite some time. I love Section 8. I didn't always love Section 8. When I got started in the business, I avoided Section 8, right? And a lot of people, they get the, the, the misconception that people like me uh, in the past had avoided Section 8 because you get lower quality tenants and cash paying tenants. And that's that's a misconception. That is an error in your thinking, right? The reason I avoided Section 8 is actually the government bureaucracy, right? But through my years of being in the business and, and building up my infrastructure, my business, we've really tailored the, the process of working uh, with the government agencies that handle Section 8. Will I say it's always super duper smooth? No, not at all. But the pros outweigh the cons, right? And what the pro is, is government guaranteed rent, right? Because again, people think that the, the quality of the tenants is somehow lower. That's not the case, right? You're going to get varying quality of tenant based on the quality of assets you buy, guys. And those assets are going to be good for two reasons or bad for two reasons, right? Condition of the property, location. If you're in a B-grade neighborhood, do you know what you're going to attract? You're going to attract B-grade tenants. If you get into a C or a D-grade neighborhood, you're going to attract C or D-grade tenants tenants no matter what you ain't getting a b grade tenant to live in your d grade neighborhood it doesn't fucking work that way no matter what you put in that motherfucking house okay you can put some fucking granite some stainless steel blah 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 blah. you're still gonna attract d grade tenants so when i'm dealing with d and c grade tenants tenants that are typically of a higher risk of not being able to pay the rent or choosing not to pay the rent especially in the day and age of covid i want my money guaranteed and i will deal uh, with the bureaucracy and the red tape of the government, and Holton Wise will do all that on your behalf. On your behalf. So, Frank, what I really uh, want you to do before you make an offer is check out the Section 8 fact. Really understand how Holton Wise will 
run you through this process and handle them for you. And then after that, why don't you do some shopping and buy yourself a motherfucking t-shirt. Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> this Section 8 property right here, this is what I think the doctor ordered. I think this one is totally going to work out for you. Now, it's already got a Section 8 tenant in there. They are on month to month. And right here, big ticket item, okay? Updated electrical, right? Yeah, it's it's messy, okay? Like, yes, is there a freaking door in the middle of this person's dining room? You bet your ass there is. Uh, I don't know why that door is there. I don't know what's going on. Uh, is there a whole bunch of, like, cat food just, like, chilling on the floor? Yeah, yeah, there is, okay? Uh, this is what D and C grade investing typically looks like, right? It's not glamorous, but it's not horrendous, right? As far as big ticket items, your electric panel, as I told you, was upgraded. Uh, this furnace, probably 15, 20 years old. Hot water tank, somewhere in the 10-year range. Just so you know, these last about 30 years, cost three Gs. These last about 15 years cost a G, right? That's to replace those. So uh, you'll factor those costs in in your capital expenditure budget, which we'll go over shortly, right? Uh, just a couple other shots, right? So is this thing uh, fancy? No, but Section 8 real estate investing, it never is fancy, okay? And by the way, the address, it's 2059 West 104th, Cleveland. Been on the market for 46 days, and the price is $79.9. Now, here's the thing. This is a long-term Section 8 tenant, right? They put this person in quite a while ago, and they're on a month-to-month -month lease, which is great. Because the market rent, because this is a four-bedroom, one-bathroom house, the market rent for this is $1,100, $13,200. Now, if they were already bringing in the market rent for Section 8, I don't think you'd have the opportunity to buy this for the price I think you could buy it. Right now, I want you to be able to pick this up at 70. If you pick it up at 70, I anticipate your fixed and variable expense estimates for the year to be just under 6000 right? That's calculating saving for those big ticket items, right? Like I, I told you. Furnace, three Gs, hot water tank, a G, right? You probably got about a decade or so left on each of those, right? So every year I'm going to have you save $660 for those big ticket items. You're not going to spend that money. You're probably going to put that in your pocket now, but I don't want to fluff you and make you think that that's actualized returns because those big ticket items are coming, right? Roof is about seven Gs. They last 30 years. I have no reason to believe this is a brand new roof. So those costs are coming. So we calculate for those. And even calculating for those, if you picked it up at 70 k you'd only put down 17 and a half, and that would be a 26.2% return on your money. But, but remember, as I said, that'd be if... You got the market rent of 1100 I don't think it would sell for 70 k if it was already there, right? What has happened is the current seller has placed the tenant in this property years ago when the voucher amounts were lower. They're at 900 Now, Section 8 doesn't just call you on the phone like, Hey, bruh, what's up? Guess what, man? We're the government. We want to give you some more fucking money. That's not how this works, right? I think you all know that. The only people that think the government's going to call you and give you money are liberal assholes. Oh! Damn, that was a good one. Zing. But if you're not a liberal asshole, you know the government's not going to come out and just try to hand you free money, right? And if you're not a liberal asshole, you know it's not really free money. It's just other people that have worked hard. It's actually their money. But, hey, that's, that's a show for another day, right? So you know the government's not coming back to you like, yo, dude, let's give you more money, right? So what you have to do is you have to go through the process with Section 8, uh, more specifically in this case, CMHA, that's uh, the housing authority that runs Section 8 in the Cleveland market, we would need to go file to get the rental rate increased. Is it an absolute guarantee that we get it to 1100 on the first shot? No, but there are no guarantees uh, when dealing with the, uh, the bureaucracy that is the government. But again, the pros, in my opinion, far outweigh the cons in a normal circumstance because as you get into C&D neighborhoods like this, the risk goes up, right? The biggest things we have to worry about are non-payment of rent and evictions, right? In my chart there, right, I have vacancy and non-payment of rent. Every year you're saving 660 Well, if we can keep 
a government guaranteed tenant happy keep them in your property for 10 15 years why are they going to move right the rent is free you're going to save a lot of freaking money in addition right your repairs and your maintenance we're saving 660 for that right this is actual money that comes home to you but i'm telling you eventually you're going to need to pay big bills so you're going to take that back so you can't really consider it return right but if you can avoid those repairs and maintenance and you can avoid the vacancy and non-payment, dude, you're going to be making so much more money. Because repairs and maintenance, folks, a lot of people think that, like, as a property manager, you have, like, a lot of bills, like, a repair in January, February, March, April. That's not how it works. The majority of your repairs are going to come at a turnover. So if you can avoid turnovers, your return is going to be huge. So even... If Section 8 didn't go all the way to 1100 which is what we typically see for properties like this with the four-bedroom vouchers, even if that doesn't happen, you're still beyond, well and above beyond the curve on this one with that government-guaranteed tenant. So let me know if you'd like me to write up an offer because I think this one's a banger. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.